Okay, so just for fun, I thought I'd make a quick video that sort of outlines my podcast editing workflow um, in Reaper. Now, my version of Reaper is heavily customized, uh, customizations that I've built up over like the last 12 years of using it to record audio and stuff like that. So the way it kind of works for me is not kind of how it works out of the box, but I thought I would just make this video to show sort of what's possible if you're willing to invest the time into uh, making customizations necessary to sort of optimize your workflow and sort of just kind of show you how I work. So I have this one giant project where I keep kind of every podcast episode I've recorded for the last God knows how long. Eventually I go back and clean up older ones just to save on disk space, uh, but I use the same projects so that I automatically have all the same settings applied and I just sort of dump the new tracks in at the end. So uh, when I start, what I do is I go ahead and grab the two audio files, so the guest's recording and my recording. Um, so what I'll do is I'll drop my recording onto the Adam track here and the guest's recording onto the guest track here. Now the first thing that I do is I uh, take the guest recording, if it was recorded in stereo like it is here, and I convert it to mono just by right clicking and uh, mixing it down to mono. And then when I record my own audio, I record it with audio hijack so that's recording both my audio and the guest's audio on the left and right channels split. And this makes it really easy for me to figure out exactly um, where the audio needs to be aligned for everything to be in sync. A lot of people try and do like some fancy clap thing. I find that's totally unnecessary if you can just record your own copy of the guest audio that's automatically time aligned with yours. So this is what I do. I basically just zoom in and I just try and see, okay, well, um, you know, where are the waveforms the same? And that kind of tells me where I need to synchronize things. So you can see here that like this section looks like it's the same as this section. Um, so we're already pretty close. So what I'll do is I'll just go and listen and try and figure out uh, exactly where the start of the episode is, where I kind of first started talking about the podcast intro. And it looks like this is kind of where I started. So before that, we were just kind of chit-chatting. Um, so what I'll do is I'll find the first time the guest speaks and I'll just kind of line it up by there. So in that case, it's uh, right here. So I'm just going to kind of zoom in. I'm going to use shift up and down to increment the waveform size so I can see things a little bit more closely. And this doesn't have to be bang on. It just has to be like pretty close. You're not going to hear any bleed through or any weird echo or anything like that. So once that's pretty good, I'll reduce the waveform size to something that looks like a good size for being manageable for editing. And then I'll select these two tracks and I'll group them and then I'll trim the start of those tracks and convert my track to mono as well. So then from here on, all I do is I have a keyboard shortcut set up to listen at double speed. So I'll just kind of go through listening at double speed um, until I find weird problems. So here you can see there's quite a big gap between uh, when I finished talking and when the guest first started talking. And this happens a lot when we're just trying to get in sort of like the rhythm and get the conversation going. So what I'll do is I'll just use option B to create a split that has a crossfade associated with it, just a little crossfade. And I'm doing this without even clicking on the screen, which is really nice. I just pulled my mouse cursor somewhere and hit option B and it automatically does it. So it's really fast. So I'll hit option B and then without even letting go of option, I'll click this audio and what um, option click lets me do in Reaper is sort of slip the audio inside of the the block that I've created. So check this out. Say I had like two splits. Instead of just like dragging the actual audio track around, I can just move the contents of the audio track without moving the edges, which is really useful for doing this sort of editing. So again, what I'll do is I'll just go and create a little a split here. I'll slide this so that it's a little bit tighter and it sounds like the conversation is a little bit smoother. And then I'll kind of do the same thing here. And if I ever end up in situations where you can see like maybe I was breathing a little bit here and that got cut off because I kind of did this split halfway through there to sort of bring my conversation closer, I'll use um, automation envelopes. So just by holding command, I can draw on this volume automation envelope and just kind of kill the volume of that section. So that's basically what I do. I just kind of go through listening at double speed cutting stuff out. If I can tell that sometimes I'm just like making stupid noises, I'll just kind of delete those with the automation tool. Um, sometimes I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's cool, whatever, agreeing with the guest or just kind of saying pointless crap that they're just talking over me. So um, if that's not actually important, I'll end up deleting that. So I'm basically just going through listening at double speed, kind of doing all this sort of thing. Um, Sometimes I'll get to a situation like maybe I stumbled over some words here. So often what I'll do is I'll make a cut right at the end of this segment and then I'll sort of line up the end of 
wherever I was fumbling here. And that usually gives me like a sort of natural transition between it because I'm doing the split right at the end of a word, lining it up with the end of a different word. So if there's any breathing or anything, it sounds pretty natural. Um, so I'll do the same sort of thing here, you know, just kind of clean this whole thing up. And I just go through the whole thing, listening at double speed. So I get through it in about half the length of a podcast. And then by the time I've edited the actual uh, conversation, um, the next step is to sort of insert my ads and intro music. So what I do there is I just kind of go back to a previous episode where you can see uh, I've got some clips set up. So here's the intro music, here's the outro music, and then here's two sponsorship reads. Uh, so what I do is I just kind of grab all this stuff. I'll head over to the new track here, or the new uh, episode and paste that stuff in. And the other thing I forgot to mention that I'm usually doing when I'm listening is uh, when I'm listening at double speed, I'm always trying to like look for a spot that would be good to inject the sponsorship read where it's not really disruptive in the conversation. So usually that's me asking a new question or switching topics. So maybe um, that was like here. And what I'm doing when I'm listening is I'm just dropping markers like this using um, shift M, I guess it is. So maybe there's another one like around here. So I just kind of drop those in loosely as I'm listening so I can go back and do the edits later. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I go ahead and I grab the intro music, I bring that over here. And the intro music has this kind of like stutter effect at the beginning. And that's what I kind of use to line things up. So you can see that's kind of the stutter effect here. And usually I need a little bit of room after and then I just kind of listen and fine tune it. So that's pretty close, you know, right there is probably good. And then to inject the ads, um, what I do is I use this mode of Reaper called ripple editing that lets me, when I move one item, it moves every item after it at the same time. I can do all that with keyboard shortcuts. So basically what I'll go and do is I'll go to this marker, I'll find a good spot spot to split the track and I just split the track using B and then if I hold control option shift command when I click it moves every track after that and you can you can watch even this outro music and this sponsorship read will move so that lets me move everything at once and create a gap without messing anything up it even moves this marker so that I don't lose the position of the next sponsorship at, at read so once I get that in place, I just kind of grab this sponsorship read, maybe zoom out a little bit so I can kind of see, pull that over here. Then I'll hit Q to go to the beginning of that track, which is used as sort of a zoom reference. So when I zoom in, I know I'm zooming in where I want to uh, sort of line this up and listen, make sure that uh, that kind of feels right. And when that's good, I'll go to the end of the sponsorship read and I'll use that ripple editing thing again to bring everything back. So hold all those modifiers again and just kind of drag all this stuff back to here. Hit Q again and zoom in. Uh, hold those modifiers again and kind of make sure pff, that's probably about right. I would just listen and make sure does that transition sound smooth back into the conversation. Probably go and drop a uh, fade in here. And then I would do the same thing for the next sponsorship read. So again, I would just go in, find kind of where I wanted to drop this in. Maybe it's here. Zoom out a little bit so I can see like how much room do I need to create for this ad. Something like that. A little bit more than I need is usually good. Drop that in, set up my zoom reference. Pull this over here. Check it out again. Let's see. That sounds pretty good. Then I'll use the ripple editing to bring everything back here. Zoom in again quickly, pull it back a little bit more, add a little fade at the beginning to make sure that that's smooth, and then uh, get to the very end of the conversation, find where everything ended. So say like we finished talking like here. Usually I stop after the last thing that the guest said and I record a separate outro. Uh, and then I'll take this intro music and I'll kind of have that fade in right as the guest is finishing what they're saying. And then what I'll do is I'll just, um, record an outro on a new track. So I might go here and I might, you know, set this up to record and that's just recording my current mic right now. So let's just do a quick little outro demo here. There you have it, folks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Full Stack Radio. You can check out the show notes at fullstackradio.com slash 115. Thanks to DigitalOcean and Cloudinary for sponsoring the podcast this episode. See you next time. So there we go. I recorded a quick little outro. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll bring that outro down onto the same track where I recorded uh, my actual conversation, and then I'll just kind of like fade that in. So uh, we'll cut out any crap at the beginning, 
kind of just crossfade that over. And then usually what I notice is the actual conversation that I'm having. Uh, I'm talking a little bit quieter than I do when I do the actual intro and outro. I think that's just a function of being on the conversation for so long. You're not really like have your face right in the microphone, kind of speaking like excitedly like you do when you're just recording a little clip. So I'll sort of normalize this volume a little bit by just holding shift um, at the top of the clip. I can bring down the volume of just that snippet a little bit. And this is the uh, pre effects chain volume, uh, which is nice. So that means that my effects chain is getting hit with the same amount of gain. So I'll kind of just fine tune this and listen by ear and make sure that they seem uh, pretty accurate. And then I'll do the exact same thing. Uh, for the intro where I kind of record hey, this is full sec radio, whatever we're going to talk about this and that kicks into the intro music and we kind of just slam that at the beginning and uh, And that's basically it um, for my effects chain uh, Let's see so I've got uh, regate which is just like a, a, a noise gate it helps cut out some stupid breathing noises and stuff when I'm not even supposed to be talking. It's set to be not very aggressive. Got a little bit of EQ. Um, I use this frequency analyzer once in a while when I'm trying to compare EQ between two different tracks and see if uh, my ears are tricking me and if things actually do feel pretty balanced. And then I use this um, CLA-2A compressor uh, from Waves, which is a expensive but really nice software compressor. And I use the same effects chain on both tracks of course with the settings tweaked a little bit depending on the on the source audio and that's kind of it and then when i'm done i just kind of select all this stuff i hit backslash to set the time selection to match the podcast and then i just do a command option r uh, to render it out and that's it so i uh, hope that was kind of interesting that's how i edit my podcasts uh cool see ya